Uh, let me talk about uh, fetal bradyrrhythmia with uh, you know a focus in mind of uh, autoimmune uh, d- disorder that is uh, uh, present in SLE and other uh, rheumatic uh, pathologies. The fetal bradyrrhythmia can be just a sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia transient we have seen many a times uh, during a scanning period. But we are more concerned about a persistent bradycardia which lasts for more than a minute and then persistent bradycardia if the heart rate is less than 100 but we get concerned when the heart rate is less than 120 and there is a long list of causes of sinus bradycardia in the fetus but today I think we would focus and discuss about uh, uh, the the antibodies against uh, the sign the AV node and these are the reasons for this is the second gravida mother came for a fetal echo at 18 weeks she has a previous child which was normal and then there was a sinus bradycardia relatives the sinus bradycardia and when we did the uh, anti-RO and anti-LA antibodies that was positive I just wanted to drive home one message that the anti-RO, anti-LA antibodies, they don't only produce a complete heart blot or an AV block, you can have a sinus bradycardia. So this is one of the investigation we wish you should uh, do in a patient who has a sinus bradycardia. We must rule out uh, SLE-like disorders. AV block again is very commonly produced uh, and it could be an immune mediated complete heart block. An immune mediated block could be a first degree AV block which is actually nothing but prolonged PR interval. A second degree AV block which is of two types Wenke back and a fixed to uh, AV block we would discuss and a complete heart block. There are obviously other causes than autoimmune for a complete heart block. The first degree AV block is recognized by prolonged PR interval. We don't have a luxury of an ECG in a patient in a in a fetus, but then we have mechanical correlates of a PR interval in the in the fetal life. So we use PR interval, the PR is taken from the onset of an A wave to the onset of a ventricular uh, complex, that is the PR interval. Mechanical PR interval is normally between 120 to 150 and above 150 we start thinking about the uh, first degree AV block but we are almost sure if the PR interval is more than 160, this is first degree AV block. Now when we take this uh, uh, measurement, the idea is to keep the cursor of a pulse wave Doppler sample that has to be in the LV inflow and LV outflow. So we make the sample size big enough so that it samples both LV inflow and LV outflow. This is how we plague the sample. We put the sample in close to the anterior mitral leaflet and LVOT so that we get a signal of LV inflow and outflow and we calculate the distance from start of an A wave to start of a V wave where we say this is the first degree AV block. In this patient, the interval is 163. Second degree AV block, when we have, there is a patient with a 2 to 1 AV block and then one patient with 4 is to 3 AV block, 4 atrial beats leading to 3 ventricular beats and the fourth one of the atrial beat is not conducted down, it is blocked. So it's called 4 is to 3 AV block. 
then we have a complete heart block with atria contract at their own pace and the electrical impulse is not passing through the AV node which is completely blocked and then ventricle contract their own slow pace. So that is a complete heart block. You can see ventricle rate and atrial rates are very different. Now anti-RO and anti-LA antibodies actually react with the, the AV node. Now this SSA antibodies are of two types but I don't think so I need to go into those details but they can be produced in variety of uh, rheumatic uh, disorders the commonest being SLE, Jogren syndrome and there are multiple overlaps and mixed connective tissue disorders. So when we see there could be three situations of immune mediated AV node involvement. The first situation is the mother has rheumatic heart disease and we are aware of that and then the mother becomes pregnant and this is the time when we want to assess the fetus. Okay. Number two which is the commoner situation the fetus has congenital heart block mother do not have uh, uh, many symptoms of a uh, rheumatic heart uh, rheumatic disease no arthritis it could be just simple dryness of the eyes but we do anti RO and anti LA antibodies and they are positive that's a common situation what we have third one is a pregnant woman who had a previous child who developed immune mediated complete heart block and then this is the second pregnancy. So how do we deal with these three situations? The first situation is mother with a rheumatic heart disease, rheumatic disease. The mother can have lot of uh, presentations in the form of infertility in, uh, and uh, recurrent pregnancy loss and the disease also during pregnancy of SLE and other rheumatic disorders can flare up which is common that we have a congenital heart block in the fetus and we recognize it was caused by uh, uh, immune mediation and that is anti RO anti LA antibodies they created it only two to three percent of the patients those who have these antibodies positive would develop a complete heart block in the fetus so that's very surprising. Now, if the previous pregnancy, the, the child, uh, the fetus had congenital heart block, autoimmune mediated, and anti RO, anti LA antibodies were positive, now the mother is pregnant again, then these are the patients which have. First time pregnancy, the chance of having complete heart block was just 2%. But now if we have a second pregnancy, the chance of having complete heart block is about 20%. And in case it is associated with the thyroid antibodies, it is more likely to have a congenital heart block. Question comes that why only 20% patients in the second pregnancy develop a complete heart block? Why not all? Number two, if so many antibodies are circulating in the body, why mother does not develop a complete heart block and why the fetus? Now, why congenital heart block develops between 18 to 26 weeks of uh, gestation and why not before and after there must be some mechanism why this thing happens the mechanism is that these are anti nuclear antibodies so now what do you want is that when you have an anti RO antibodies crossing the placenta they cross the placenta and they reach an intact cell and doesn't produce anything 
they do not react with an intact cell now the when the av node is regenerating the apoptosis or a cell death happens frequently there at that particular moment when the apoptosis is happening the nuclei of the cells are exposed outside the cell is dying and that is the time when these antibodies cross react with nuclei of the fetal apoptotic cells so apoptosis or regeneration happens at a very specific time and if that time antibody that happened to be there that would create an inflammatory response phagocytes would come and then not only that they would create inflammation and cause a fibrosis of that area so by producing a fibrosis they would produce a complete heart block more than that that inflammatory response is again gene mediated we have seen patients where there is a twin pregnancy but only one twin suffered a, a complete heart block the other twin was unaffected the only explanation for this is that there is some gene mediation of inflammatory response i am going to show you something more interesting and if you notice here you see this is a complete heart block apart from the complete heart block you see some fibrosis some thickening of this area and you see the thickening of this is aorta and that is intraatrial septum and the pulmonary artery and you also see some specks of calcification in the aorta what is all about this is again a hyper echoic area in the left ventricular outflow tract and you see in the pulmonary artery you see in the av Mm, groove and you see this calcification of the mitral ventricular annuli so these are patients those who have anti ro anti la antibody positive so it may not produce a complete heart block like in this patients but it can produce inflammation in the myocardium <clears throat> so now that's the second thing which is very important is the extra nodal effects of auto antibodies now myocarditis it can lead to myofibroblastosis 20% patients even mm, they do not develop a heart block but they have a myocarditis it can produce well regurgitations <coughs> rupture of the papillary muscle cardiomyopathy sinus bradycardia and even pericardial effusion remember that these extra nodal effect effects of anti ro anti la antibodies they do respond very well to steroids because we know if the fetus develops a complete heart block the steroids are ineffective but when these myocarditis features are there they do respond to steroids even in a complete heart block now you see these are the areas which are affected by the auto antibodies and these are papillary muscles cardi atrium septum la ra walls mitral annulus and so many things it has been described that you can have a papillary muscle rupture valvular regurgitations because of these auto antibodies let's discuss the treatment of the complete heart block once the complete heart block develops the steroids are not effective you can give salbutamol just to keep up the heart rate but at the cost of the risk of developing ventricular arrhythmias remember that means that you we want to prevent 
complete hard block to happen because once complete hard block happens the treatment is not available now these are the stages of the complete hard block to revise again first degree second degree and a third degree av block and we have to prevent the complete heart block or a third degree av block to develop so once you recognize prolongation of the pr interval that's the time steroids can be given and they tend to prevent development of a complete heart block so how do we do it so when we have let's say there is a patient who had uh, uh, sle and uh, has anti ro anti la antibody positive or second situation when the previous child had a complete heart block and this is the second pregnancy we know that this pregnancy is at a risk of developing complete heart block and we try to prevent it how do we try to prevent it we give hydroxy chloroquine and this reduces incidence by one third we give 200 mg of bid dose of this and we start at 10 weeks of gestation and continue at least till 28 weeks if not throughout the pregnancy steroids do not have any role in prevention of complete heart block there but if we in the patients we monitor if there is a pr interval prolongation that means that is the time when inflammation is happening this is the time when we give steroids and we can prevent progression to a complete heart block so how do we monitor pr interval we monitor pr interval starting from 18 weeks of gestation we do it fortnightly or in case there is a increase in pr interval we make it a weekly assessment and if the with the increase when the pr interval you see there is a prolongation of a pr interval of more than 160 millisecond we start steroid in these patients to prevent a complete heart block 